Hey guys, Lori here and back. Um, I'm here for my the, my last reading vlog in the month of July. So right now it's July 27th. Reading Rush just finished. I don't want to talk too much about the controversy about Reading Rush, but I will. I'm seriously gonna consider participating next year. Like, just don't think it's appropriate if you host if you choose a group book and you have a book club about that book and then you don't talk about the book I think it's extremely disrespectful to any author but especially if you choose like a book about a minority author and then you just laugh that you don't get to finish it like first of all you guys ran this book club like you guys should have read this before the book the reading rush even started that would have been a good idea um but yeah there's definitely some um book clubs in the future or reading rushes or reading challenges I'm going to participate that are more like inclusive and you know I like reading rush because it's kind of a fun thing to do over the summer but I don't know they really need to re-examine their life choices because that was a bad one but enough about the drama but I do want to say that I this week is really going to be a catch-up week for me um I have a bunch of books that I took out from my library so the first book I'm going to physically read um, is, um, let's see, what is it called? You'll Be Mine by Erin Hahn. I read her second book more than maybe this, um, this, this last month, well, this month technically, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm hopeful that I will really enjoy that one. Um, I also have a physical read that I literally just got in, and it is Girl in the Witcher's Garden by Erin Bow Bowman, and this is a Secret Garden inspired retelling. It's also like super short, so this is definitely a possibility for this week. And I also have two other ebooks that I have been like waiting for from my library. Um, and one is the Cinderella retelling that from the from the Twisted Sales. So this is love. And another one is Lost Stars by Claudia Gray, which is the Star Wars first book in To Rise of the Skywalker. So that is my physical reading plans. Um, I do definitely want um, to do some listening catch up on some of my podcasts this week. I do have to start winter, so I'm probably going to start that this week. So yeah, I have a couple of little R&D stuff that I have to do that I didn't get to, I, I didn't wind up doing yesterday and I also want to do my nonfiction reading and my Skillshare class so I'm gonna go do all that stuff and then I'll check back in with you guys bye hey it's Lori here I'm back it's almost 11 o'clock I did wind up going for a bike ride and I did wind up reading about 30 pages of You'd Be Mine by Erin Hahn I have such a soft spot for books about the music industry I always have one of my favorite contemporaries is Love Song and Other Lies by Jessica Pennington this book is like it reminds me of a nice mix between more than maybe but also Love Song and Other Lies because it does have a touring element, which actually works out perfectly because the next book on my um, TBR and Beyond reading challenge is Read a Book About Travel, and this book is about a tour. So it's perfectly for that. Um, but it basically follows these two characters. Ready has some of my favorite tropes. I love books that have dual point of views. I love books that have, like, a music element. But you basically follow... I don't remember her name because the book's over there. But you follow Clay and Amy, I think her name is. I'll tell you in the next clip what her name is. Um, but basically, Clay is like this country star, like, heartthrob. He is not making the best decisions, like, life-wise. His, his brother passed away in the last in the last couple of years, I think in, like, the last year um, in Iraq. And he's kind of dealing with the after effects of that. So he's kind of living making some very, very bad decisions, and his record label has kind of had enough of him. So he's supposed to go on tour. The only way they'll agree to the tour is if he gets this up-and-coming, um, this up-and-coming country star to sign with them and go on tour with him. And this up-and-coming star is the daughter of two rock and roll, like, country icons that wind up passing away five years ago. She's very, very good, but she's in been she's not been doing anything for the past five years. So that's kind of how their paths cross. Um, I don't know if it's going to be love to hate. I know that he's kind of dealing with a lot, and she's dealing with a lot. She also has a lot of, like, they're both, they're, they're both grieving. They're both dealing with a lot of that. But she also has a lot of, like, pressure from her grandmother. And the music industry was very, very hard on her mother and her father. 
so there's that element but they do have to tour together so I'd be curious if it is if it goes like love to hate I really love that book but then I also like friends to like you know so I don't know we'll see but I'm only 30 pages in really enjoying it so I'm gonna go read that um for a little bit I said this in my last reading vlog but I don't even know if I'm ever gonna post it um because of all the stuff with the reading rush but I have some really bad um blisters on the bottom of my feet so I don't even know if I'm going to go for a lot of walks until tomorrow because I want to see if they'll heal. Um, sorry, too much information, but that's probably why my walking will be a little bit less. But I'm going to go read and I'll check back in with you guys when I read a little bit more. Bye. Hi, Sorry, here. I'm just checking back in. It's almost 1230 and I did actually wind up reading a little bit more in um, You'd Be Mine um, by Erin Han. I'm now on chapter six, which is um let's see page 53 this book is not that long but i'm really liking the elements where there was like more than two characters in this book it's definitely set around like a music industry we definitely learned more about An An annie's past which i think is really interesting and you can kind of see her indecision to be in this industry at all but knowing that she loves it um you're also the last chapter was from um, Clay's head. I really like them as characters. I wouldn't qualify this as love to hate, but you definitely could see that they do have feelings for each other, like even if it's just like lust feelings at first. But I'm loving that, the, you know, they're kind of getting to know each other because you have two groups of people that are kind of coming, uh, two bands I'll say that, that are kind of coming together. You have um, Annie's band and then you have Clay's band. So they're kind of like coming together. And I like that. I still think that there's a lot more to learn about Clay's past because we we have a lot more information about Annie's right now but I'm really liking it I'm excited to see like where tour goes because that's like something that I always really enjoy but yeah I'm gonna go back to reading and I'll check in with you guys when I read about about 50 more pages bye sorry her I'm back it's about 1 30 I did wind up reading about 72 pages in You'll Be Mine by Erin Han. It's definitely a really interesting read it definitely deals with like the dark side of fame I would say like and normally when you read, like, books about that, it doesn't really dive into, like, the darker side of fame. But you definitely do see that Annie's past and her family's past is much on the darker side. And you see that Clay is kind of known as the bad boy, but I think he's actually, like, more in tune with the industry than Annie is. Because Annie's been kind of away from it. I do really like all the side characters. I love Fitz. I love the little band, the Weeping Willows, that um, Annie's in. It's so fun. I, I, I'm, I'm growing to really like their relationship. I hope that they have like more interactions with each other, but it's just, it's a really, really fun read. It does definitely does talk about the darker side of fame. Um, you know, the aspects of drugs and what eventually led to her parents demise. I'll say, I don't want to be too spoilery because it's not like in the first couple pages. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to do a quick workout. It's so hot out. So I think I'm probably going to do one inside um, but I'll report back when I read a little bit more. Bye. I'm back. I've kind of changed my angle a little bit because it's still a beautiful day, just too hot to be going for walks. But I wound up getting up to page 89 in, um, sorry, no book cover to show you. You'd Be Mine by Erin Han. I really am liking this book. It definitely am gearing more towards love to hate. But because he's, like, Clay's just acting like a jerk. Like, He's just acting like a jerk. <laughs> like, I'm sure there's more to him. Like, as you, you're going to get more as perspective. But right now, I'm just like, why are you being such a jerk? I am loving the songs that she's writing in this book. And I always say, like, I wonder if, like, the audiobooks actually have them as songs or if they're just, like, text. I should probably look into that. Um, but I just love the songs in these books. And I wish that they, someone would, like, write, write, write them and put out a CD. Because they're just really, really good. Her song, Coattails. I want that, like, on my playlist because I like it. Um, it's definitely, and I like her as a character. I think she's definitely living in the, um, the ruins of her parents' reputation and what her parents did. And she's very afraid of, like, becoming, like, her mom. So that's always something she's doing. So really liking it. It's definitely, like, a fun beach read, which is, like, exactly what I'm wanting right now. It's very, very fast-paced. So I'm going to go keep reading and I'll update you guys when I have a moment. Bye. Sorry, here I'm back. I'm already wind up going for a walk. I listened to one more chapter of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I am so close to finishing my reread along with MuggleCast. And it's, I always love the end of Harry Potter books because everything kind of wraps up so nicely. But I want to get up to page 107 in this book that I'm reading by Erin Han. You'd be mine, I think. The title is so weird in my head. 
but I'm really liking it. Definitely looks the darker side of fame. I'll say that, like the darker side of country music and you know what that can lead to. You could definitely tell that Clay's dealing with a lot. He definitely drinks more than he should. He may be leading into addiction territory. Um, Amy's parents have a lot of issues that are kind of dealing with her and she's kind of in the middle of her grief cycle right now even though it is five past their their untimely demises um but it's very very good I'm really liking the music element I like that we're getting songs that in earlier because I wish that there was like a corresponding music element because I would so put these on my iPod like totally would do that um but yeah so I'm gonna go back to reading and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit bye Sorry here, I'm back. It's much later. It's like 1.20. I had a very, very busy morning. I went to yoga. I went for yeah. a walk. I took a bike ride. I finished Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix along with my Muggle cast re-listen, which is actually really exciting. I haven't listened to their concluding episode yet, but I did find it when I was listening it. I always love how J.K. Rowling ends her books. I always have loved it. So I did wind up getting up to page... 161 in UB9 and about 50%, 55% done. Um, it's definitely a harder hitting book than her f second one, um, more than maybe. Um, it definitely deals yeah. with like anxiety and depression and alcoholism and stuff like that. But I love the country music scene. I love the songs. I really love the character. I love the dual point of view. Just a more hitting, a more hard hitting book. So I'm gonna go keep reading. I'll check back with you when I read about 50 more pages. Hey, it's Lori here. I'm back. I'm just doing a quick update. I did wind up getting up to page, to page 251 in my book. It definitely took a much darker turn. This book definitely does deal with a lot of harder topics like drugs and addiction and the darker side of fame. I would say that her second book kind of deals with the more fluffy side that has some like harder elements family-wise, but this book definitely does deal with like alcoholism and drugs and the darker side of fame especially because both characters have a lot of issues that they're kind of reeling with I definitely would say it's a very different type of romance but one that I really am liking this is definitely probably going to be like at least a four and a half star read because I'm really enjoying it I love books that have dual point of view I love the travel aspect the touring aspects I love the songs in this book I wish that they were on a cd I said that a couple of times in this video so I'm actually going to go head back head back out and read and probably come in and check in when I'm done. But I'm really liking this. I'm really happy that I picked it up. I think she's definitely going to be one of my new favorite authors of 2020. Um, and I'm definitely going to be checking out more books when they come out. But I'm really happy that I finally picked it up. Talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. Right here. I'm back. I just wound up finishing You Be Mine by Erin Hahn. I love this book so much. I love hard-hitting contemporaries. I love music-themed contemporaries. I really, really loved it. I don't know if we're ever going to see these characters again, but I really love the side characters in this book a lot. Um, I think that they're so fun, and I would really love a companion book following one of the side characters. This book was so fun to read from. It definitely is a harder take on the country music industry, I'll say that. Definitely deals with, you know, grief, depression, um drugs and alcohol abuse I'll say that um but it was a very interesting read and one that I really really liked if you like the book love life in the list I think you would equally love this one it does deal with harder topics but I love the dual point of view I thought this was like also like a very unique romance book it wasn't necessarily love to hate and it wasn't necessarily like friends to lovers it was kind of in the middle and I found that to be super charming um it was a really really fun read so I don't normally read sneak peeks and I'm probably not even going to log it on Goodreads because it's not a full book. But I am going to read the chapter, the chapter sampler that I got from Disney Hyperion for Lore by Alexandra Bracken. Because I'm hopeful if I review it, if I review that little sample, they might send me the physical arc, when it, like, a, like the full length arc when it comes out in a couple of uh, months. So I'm going to do that. It's not going to take me that long. I don't normally read them because I often get super frustrated with books like that because I just like want to know what's going to happen. But I really love Alexandra Bracken's writing. So I'm going to take like 30 minutes and kind of read that, review it, and hope that I get the full arc or I'm going to have to wait a really, really long time. So I'm going to go do that and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. Laura here. I'm back. Last night, I don't know what happened. I was not feeling my best. I think it was a combination of walking outside for a while yesterday and because it was so hot. So I think I'm going to kind of reverse my schedule a little bit. I normally go for a bike ride later in the day, but because it's so hot and I just 
did not have a good feeling day yesterday. Like, I was reading the other way. I was always watching a lot of news, and in the lead-up to election, it can be a little bit stressful. So, I think I'm going to kind of limit my news intake a little bit. Um, but I did, last, yesterday, I did one of Finishing You'd Be Mine by Aaron Hahn. I ended up thoroughly loving that book. And now I said in my last clip, I'm going to try to read the lore preview. I still am going to try to do that um, because I want to torture myself and just hope that I get access to the arc a little bit early. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my Skillshare class today. I'm going to do a little bit of my Skillshare class and then I'm going to book our bike ride and then I'll probably do my nonfiction reading later. So I'm going to do that and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Lori here, I'm back. Um, I did want up going for a bike ride and I wound up listening to a little bit more of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix Roundup podcast from MuggleCast, which if you have not been checking out MuggleCast, I highly recommend it. But I also read about 30% in my lore sampler by Alexandra Bracken. I'm very curious. It definitely deals with like Greek gods and you're following this girl named Lore. But I don't know much else about it. I know that there was like a god battle at the start of it. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. Um, but and now she's kind of connecting with someone from her past. But she's also in like a battle-like sequence. I'm a little bit intrigued. So I am gonna go do my nonfiction reading for the day, and then I'm gonna do my Skillshare class. Then I'm probably gonna dive back in and finish lore. Um, I'm just trying to stay a little bit more hydrated today. That might have been the problem from yesterday. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. Lori here. I'm back in the shade in the back of my house um but i just want to do a quick update i did one up reading to about let's see chapter four which is like i guess we're gonna get 10 chapters of this so still really really liking it it definitely is like um a mythology inspired fantasy novel but i don't have a lot of like context of what's happening with lore like she has a best friend named miles and there's some past stuff that like she's dealing with but nothing super clear like at all like so I'm very very intrigued but also I'm not really sure like what her role in the story is necessarily but a famous god has made an appearance so I'm excited to go back and read more about that so I'm gonna do that and then I'll probably update you guys with my thoughts on more when I'm done and then I'm, me and my dad are probably gonna go for a bike ride if I could sleep him out of fixing this canopy um but yeah I'll check back in when I'm done with more hi Lori here. I'm back. Sorry, I'm back inside. I like the lighting a lot better outside, but I don't want to say that I want to finishing lore. Well, the sneak peek by Alexandra Bracken. I am so intrigued by that book. Like right now, sorry, my hair is a little messy. I just came back from a bike ride. It's really fascinating. Like I don't want to spoil too much because it's like only a sneak peek. I know that stuff can change, but it definitely has to do with Greek mythology. It definitely has a female lead, which I'm loving. And it's kind of a unique premise for Greek mythology and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot more to uncover because I think it was like only the first like maybe 50, maybe 100 pages I don't even know how many pages it was because it just was like percentage wise but I wound up really liking it I really hope that I wind up getting the full arc because I will definitely devour it Alexandra Bracken is definitely like one of my favorite authors by far but I think I'm gonna do is because we just got back from a bike ride I think I'm going to I'm actually feeling a lot better today which is good I don't know what happened yesterday. Like, I just was not feeling my best. But what I do want to do is I want to do my ab workout because I didn't do that yesterday. I do that, finish listening to the podcast that I'm listening to, and then kind of choose my next read. I'm kind of torn between three or four books, to be honest with you. So I'm going to kind of decide that. It's definitely, like, wrap, that month wrapping up. So I am also might try to choose my TBR for August. So, yeah, that's kind of my plan of attack right now. But I'll come back. My workout's not going to take me that long. So I'm going to go do my workout. And then I'm kind of going to figure out what I want to read next. I have two whole books from the library. What if the, what if the, this is love from the Twisted Tales, the Cinderella one, which I've literally been waiting 11 weeks for. Lost Stars, which is the start of the Star Wars thing leading up to Force Awakens. And two other books. So that's kind of where my head's at right now. So yeah, I'm going to go work out and then I'll come back and we'll kind of chat through the books and then I think I'm going to pick one. Bye. Hey guys, Lori here. Sorry, I'm like sweaty and gross. But I do think I'm going to pick up Lost Stars, which is the first book in the Star Wars long line of books that lead up to Force Awakens. I wanted to actually read Star Wars books, Star Wars books for quite a while. And I just have not been motivated. So I figured if I took them out from the library, it would be some motivation. This is my third time getting access to this arc. And my third, like, my second time actually not putting it back. So 
I'm going to start it. I don't know what the story is about. I know it's about two fighter pilots, I think. I could be wrong. But I'm going to go do play a little bit of Animal Crossing. I think I'm about to finish my house, which will be so lovely, which means I can finally put it down, be done paying off my house on Animal Crossing. And hopefully that gets some things going because I want to progress through my island. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my plans of attack. I'm going to go play a little bit of Animal Crossing and then I'm going to start Lost Stars, which is by Claudia Gray. And I'll check in with you guys when I make a little bit of progress on Lost Stars because right now I don't have any idea what it's about. Bye. I'm back. It's about almost 6 o'clock, um, but I didn't want to be reading about 22 pages in um, Lost Stars. I love, this is one of my favorite tropes of like all time. I love tropes where kids, like, you see kids, like, little kids, like, and they become friends at the start of a book, and then it jumps forward, like, five to ten years, and you see them as young adults, because I really love that trope. That's basically what's happening here. I just read the prologue, and you have these two kids, um, and this is set right after, um, like, the second trilogy, um, so the one with, um, Natalie Portman and, um, Hayden Christensen. I can't remember the name of that series. But, so this is like following, and it's going, it's, um, Empathy Palpatine is the villain in Star Wars, the newest one with The Force Awakens and stuff like that. But, so the only thing I know is that these two little kids, they meet, they were, they're like watching the flight, they're watching the planes take off, they're watching the fighter jets, and they decide that they want to be fighter jet pilots. So, the next one is like five years in the future, and I'm sure that they have been, become more friendly, but that's all that I know. All that I know, five years, flash forward, that's where we are. So I'm going to go back to reading and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. It's Lori here. I'm back. Um, I'm just, I just wound up, I took a shower. I kind of organized my TBR for the month of August, which is always the month that's kind of a shot in the dark. I either get a lot of reading done or I get no reading. Well, not like no reading done, but I. it's the month where I start kind of planning for school. We're still in kind of like a transitional period figuring out what's going to happen in the fall. Like we're not having a lot of answers. It can go a bunch of different ways. I know the way I kind of think it's going to fall, but we'll see if I'm right. But um, I did say earlier in this vlog that I started reading How to Be an Anti-Racist, and I'm enjoying it. But it's not the type of book I feel like I'm going to read physically because it's a book that um, it's – it really does incorporate a lot of his life elements. And whenever I'm reading like a memoir style book, I really do like to listen to it. Um, because it's not a book that I can like, I really note take a lot about. Um, so I think I'm going to have to swap up the book that I'm reading for my nonfiction read that I read every morning along with my Skillshare class. Um, so I'm going to take a couple of minutes and kind of figure that out. I had a couple on my list, like maybe like a creative one or something like that. Just something to kind of like just like a break, I think, but also like I'm definitely going to read How to Be an Anti-Racist, um, listen to it because I'm just, I'm in, more in the mood to listen to that book. So I'm going to go figure that part out. Um, and then I also did want to bring another chapter of Lost Stars by Claudia Gray. I love books that have like, um, a, like, you know, a friendship that kind of grows. Um, there is like a Romeo and Juliet inspired element with them though, because like, their parents are like don't get along so even the fact that they're friends is like controversial um and they're you know they're they're fighter pilots they're practicing to be fighter pilots and they both want to go to the fight the fight the flight school um so there's a little bit of maybe it will eventually be competition going that way but i'm really liking it i haven't i haven't i haven't um really ever read a star wars book i read a couple when i was much younger um, right, like when Phantom Menace came out, but that's a bit, so I'm really liking it. I'm gonna go pick my nonfiction read, because I was really struggling the past couple of days, and I think that's what it was. It, it was like how I felt when I was reading White Fragility. Um, it's another book that was very, very storytelling based, and those books I really love because I think it's filled with a lot of, like, personal experiences, um, but it's just not, whenever, like, basically the reason I started doing all my note-taking stuff was because... I wanted to learn a little bit more and do with everything that was happening in the world. I felt like racism and anti-racist literature was kind of the path I wanted to go. But also what I'm learning through taking all these Skillshare's classes is there's so many other things I do want to learn. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of take a couple of minutes or like 30 minutes and kind of figure out what I'm in the mood to read nonfiction wise and kind of 
pick up something from Audible, I mean, from my library or, like, a cheaper book on my Kindle. But, yeah. And then I'll come in to kind of tell you what I picked, but that's kind of my... It's nothing against that book by any means. I just feel like I would get a lot more out of it by listening to it um, than taking notes. Because I don't think it's a book I would necessarily take notes on. Because, again, I, I have a good foundation with the other book that I read, with the other couple of books, you know, Me and me and White Supremacy. That book was, like, a very good foundational book, and I'm so glad that I read that, and that was a note-taking book for me. So I'm going to go pick a book that's more of a note-taking book. Um, and, yeah, so I'll be back. Bye. That was a quick choice. I wound up picking up the Creativity Ink book, that the one that's written by all the writers or designers of the Pixar company. That's a book that I've wanted to read for quite a while. I actually think I have my own copy of it, but I wound up taking it out from the library because it's like a little bit more, mo like I have to return it. And then if I wind up having my own copy, that's fine, but I didn't wind up taking it out. I can't remember if I have a physical copy of it or not, to be honest. But that's the book I'm going to start tomorrow, and I will, in the next couple of days or weeks, probably when I finish Winter. Winter is the next audiobook that I do have to start. I'm probably going to start that the end of this week after I finish my Sam Maggs book that I have. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go back to reading Lost Stars and I'll update you guys when I can. Bye. I'm checking back in. I'm going to stop reading for the night because I get to like a pretty decent section. These chapters are really, really long, um, but I did wind up getting up to page, according to my Kindle, I'm on to page... 54, which is actually what I want. I want to read, read about 50 pages. Um, but this book definitely does, does take place at, like, it, um, a fight piloting school. And the first, like, I would say like the first, like, 30 pages follows them in their, like, when they're little kids. And then you kind of get a section, like, when they're 13 and then 14 and then 15. Um, but they're, in to, they're, they're together at this certain flight school um and you follow them both a different point of views um and it's I'm just liking it I, I think it's fun I like space I mean I always like Star Wars I think Star Wars is probably not one of my favorite fans but I do love it I definitely love the newer trilogy like a lot I love the actors in that trilogy so I'm excited to be kind of reading the books that kind of correspond to it and there's a lot this is probably going to take me about like two to three years to complete because there were quite a few books on that but I'm just I'm really liking it I'm loving these characters I love like strong friendship novels but they are starting to have romantic talk at least not to each other but like in like their narratives in their heads which I think is super interesting so yeah I will check in with you guys tomorrow um I don't know what I'm gonna watch tonight I think it's gonna either be a toss-up between Tales of the City or rewatch the Umbrella Academy to get ready for season two. So those are kind of my plans. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey, here I'm back. It's about eleven o'clock on July thirtieth, which means I have two more days in this month to get as much reading done as possible. I did do my nonfiction reading. I wound up choosing the Creativity Ink book that was written by the Pixar executive, um, which is all about developing creativity in your spaces and this one was kind of a read I've always wanted to read and since I'm going to be going back to school in some capacity in this fall I really want to make my space and how I teach more creatively sound and more welcoming for environments and to in, in, to lessen the pitfalls that come with creativity. Um, I know it's a little bit different than working in like an like a business setting but also working in a school setting but I'm hopeful this book will give me some practical tips to make my school and my room and my classroom and my environment a little bit more creative. Um, I also am in the middle of a Skillshare class that's all about developing a creative side hustle. This is kind of my side hustle and to be honest and so is my Instagram and so is my booktube channel so like I'm just trying to see like how to make it more specific. Um, I've talked about this in a couple of recent reading vlogs. I really am contemplating changing my name on here um, just because it's just my first and my last name so I'm trying to think of something that kind of encompasses everything. Um, so that's kind of why I've been watching all these to kind of get like an idea. My friend Angela just says I should just change it and stop being, or stop overthinking it, which is probably true. Love you, Angela. Um, but I also did make a little bit of reading progress on Lost Stars. Um, I'm about, I think I'm on chapter six. I think I'm like 60 pages in. Um, it's definitely, I'm loving the flight school elements. Um, there's also a sabotage elements. There's also the best friend trope that might lead to more. This is at the very start of The Force Awakens, so it's very, very far removed. These two characters really have nothing to do with that story, but it's kind of politically leading to it. 
Um, but yeah, so I actually physically get to go into my library today. I'm so excited. So I'm going to go to my library, wander around, probably get more books than I can possibly read. I'm actually returning to one that I read and one that I didn't get a chance to read, but I don't think I'm going to read. I'm really trying to focus on sequel reading and contemporaries next month. And there's a couple of reading challenges that I want to start planning for. So yeah, that's kind of my plan. And I'll update you guys when I'm back from my errands and my lunch. Bye. Hi guys, Larry here. I'm back. I just want to do a quick update on my reading as I'm sitting outside enjoying the beautiful sunshine. Um, but I did wind up getting up to page, sorry, my Kindle's taking a little bit of a load, but I, I'm at about 100 pages. I'm still really enjoying it. There's definitely, this book definitely, like, it starts when they're super young and you have many time skips up until the point where they're about to graduate academy. Um, but you have these two characters and they're in very, very different space about how they feel about the Star Wars Republic and how they feel about the governments. Um, you're seeing, like, Layla as a, like, Layla Organa as a character, which is really, really cool. Um, and now they're realizing what led to their dissolution of their friendship may not be what they thought it was, which I'm really liking. So I'm going to head back to reading and I'll catch, in, I'll catch up with you guys when I can. I'm so excited Umbrella Academy is coming back tomorrow and I'm probably going to spend the evening catching up and at least watching the last two episodes because it's been a bit since I've seen Umbrella Academy season one and I love that show a lot. So I'm going to go back to reading and I'll update you guys when I can. Bye. It's like I have not moved from this spot, but I actually did. I went and played Animal Crossing. I watched the last episode of season one of um, Umbrella Academy. Kind of need a little bit of a refresher because it's been a bit since I watched that. Um, but I'm really excited to dive in to second season, and I think I'm definitely going to try to pick up the comic books. Um, but yeah, I just want to say that I just wound up reading a little bit more in Lost Stars. I'm really intrigued by this book. Like, um, it's interesting because the characters you are following are against Lake, Le Lake Leia, which I think is really interesting because normally, let's so like, I think it's always like a battle of like good versus evil, but like you're following these two characters who are versus like, our heroes, so I think that that's really interesting, their dynamics are super interesting, this book has followed them through, like, since they were little kids to, like, now that they're, like, fighter, pi they're fighter pilots, but I'm really enjoying it, I also like that we get, like, a lot of different characters in addition to our two main characters, we get, like, a lot of side characters, and then you also get Andrew, like, you hear about Dark Vader, which means, I don't know when this book is taking place, because Dark Vader is still technically alive, which makes me think it's probably set between... Empire Strike Back, I think probably around there. I'd have to look it up, but I'm really liking it. It's definitely like a more fast-paced read than what I was expecting, but it, it physical book, I would say it's probably like 500 pages, so it's probably going to take me a bit, um, but before today's over, I do definitely want to sit down. I haven't been feeling my best stomach-wise. My, stomach, my stomach's been bothering me, um, just, you know, it happens occasionally. I don't have, when I think po po politics and stuff like that makes me incredibly anxious and that's all we've been seeing in the news today so my anxiety has peaked um but um I want to really sit down and figure out I have picked my TBR but I want to do two reading challenges one is the tropical readathon and one is the diverse readathon to kind of combat the bitter taste in my mouth from the reading rush so I kind of want to support other creators that are doing their due diligence to put up readathons that are supportive of all races and very very inclusive so I'm going to try to figure out what books will kind of correspond with that. I'll probably do that tomorrow or tonight. I think I'll probably do it tonight now that I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go finish watching my YouTube queue and then I'll check in with you guys. Bye. Hi, guys. Lori here. I'm back. I'm actually going to wind up wrapping up this reading vlog um, because I never have enough content when I just do a, like, a weekend reading vlog. So I'm actually going to like do three days. Also, it's the beginning of the month. Um, so yeah. I actually had a rather okay reading week. I said before throughout this reading vlog, I haven't been feeling my best this week. It is really hot here. I'll say that. Like, we are in the middle of, like, a really, really hot streak. Um, and I've been trying to be outside so much because really, during the winter, I don't get to be outside. So I think that that had a little bit of, like, a flare-up. But I did want to say that I did get a little bit of reading done. I did want to finishing Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix along with Mungo Cast. They've been doing that read done, I think, for like a year. I have some mixed feelings about J.K. Rowling at the moment, but I really do like her writing. I do. I've always loved it. Um, that book is definitely one that I think is really important to read nowadays. It's very, very political heavy. There is a lot of like allegories 
to 2016 and 2020. So I really wound up liking that. I also finished reading um, You'd Be Mine by Erin Han, which is her first book, which follows two country singers um, and they're forced to go on tour together. And I wound up adoring that book. I wound up giving that book five stars. This is the second Erin Han book that I wound up giving five stars to. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Would definitely say it does tackle a lot of harder issues like PTSD, alcoholism, drugs. It's definitely a harder take on the country music scene, but I wound up really liking it. And I would, I'm so excited for her next book, which follows it's a companion book to More Than Maybe. I also read The Sneak Peek of Lore by Alexandra Bracken, which had me so curious. I'm really hoping I get a full e arc of that but if not I'll just have to wait till January and I started Lost Stars by Claudia Gray which is a novel in the lead up to Force Awakens this I think because now that I kind of read a little bit more this is set after the Death Star exploded um and you kind of see another side of this story because you follow two characters that are on the Dark Vader side of that element um so I really hope to read a little bit more of that today but I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog because I wanted to do some filming for um, this weekend because this week, before this weekend hits, because tomorrow Umbrella Academy Season 2 comes out and that's all that I want to do. So I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog and I'll see you guys for my next one, which will probably be for me in like 10 minutes when I film it. But for you, it will be about a couple of days later. Bye guys. Stay safe and be well.